So a dictionary, if you're not familiar, is uh, an associative array. It's something like if you want to check whether, uh, um, you know, like let's say you want to have like a collection of things um, and and then uh, like count that, count how many of something exists, right? That is like dicks are just like a very important part of computer science and we, we need them all over the place. Um, so here you can see like, from collections import dict, you got to import it. Um, the dict type is parameterized on the key type and the value type. Uh, so this is true in Python kind of, like you can type your dictionaries in Python, but you don't have to. Obviously in Python, you can have anything here. This is more of like a static type right now. It's more low level. So you can only have one type of thing in the dictionary. Um, but then once it exists, you can kind of use it the same way you would use a Python dictionary. You can access it, um, get the length, uh, get the value associated with different elements um, or remove elements, that sort of thing. One limitation that I wanna call out here is you can see that here we're using something called a string key and not a string. Uh, this is something we're kind of actively working on but didn't make it into the 0.7 release. Um, but uh, the key has to be this kind of like, uh, where's the example of this? Sorry for scrolling around. Oh, here we go. Um, the key has to uh, uh, conform to this key element trait right now. And that means uh, it's gotta be hashable. And this is kind of, which means it has to be like, you have to be able to get an integer out of it. This is how we get a lot of the good performance out of the dictionary is, is being able to map a type to an integer that lets us sort of uh, internally efficiently access or look for that thing. Um, and you have to check whether it equals something else. And that's sort of a, a really typical dictionary requirement. Obviously, if you have a collection of things and you want to you know, get that thing out of the collection, you need to know whether you found it or not. So that's, that's like, I think like the, two, the sort of most minimal version of this. Um, these other methods here, these constructors, are here for uh, kind of the conversion. So you can see here, even though we called it a string key, uh, we're just passing in a string here, right? And the way, and, and so these these constructors are allowing us to do that. They're saying like, hey, you can just turn a string into a string key. It's fine. And the uh, is the dict ordered? Uh, yes. So the underlying implementation is very similar to. Uh, to Python's dictionary. So it's extremely efficient. Python's dictionary, like because its dictionaries are so important to the language, it's extremely optimized. So we use a very similar dictionary implementation. It's really fast. Um, and it, but it does retain Python's uh, kind of ordering feature. So uh, although you can't uh, iterate through a dictionary yet, that's related to uh, references. <laughs> Um, we just like uh, are, are kind of getting un unlocked on that. Uh, but when you can, you will be able to see them in order, uh, like in insertion order. So I'm gonna talk about two other features that uh, I think made it in, but were not highlighted in the change log, but I think were critical to implementing dictionary. Um, one is variant, and this is really kind of the first uh, like dynamic type in the language. Everything else, you know, Mojo really, unless it's like kind of in its sort of like Python mode, um, everything else is like kind of a static type. The compiler needs to know what type it is. And with variant, you can say, this is gonna be one type or another type. And you can put more types in here as well. You can have like a variant of many different types. Um, and then when you pass something in, you don't have to know whether it's an int or string uh, until, until you're running, right? You could load something in, you know, conditionally you could put a string in here and int in here. Um, and then you can ask uh, whether it's currently holding a string or not um, and get a string out. Um, or you can, uh, you know, get the other type out, for instance. Um, and this is really great because uh, I think like this is this is just kind of like key to to a lot of usages, right? Where you like yeah. JSON, for instance, if you wanted to write something that represents JSON, um, you could have your dictionary type like hold 
a reference to you know something that's a variant of several different types. Okay, so optional you may recognize from a lot of a lot of languages are are adopting something like this now. Optional is kind of like once we had variant, making optional was really easy. Um, but one thing I really love about it, and it, you can't really tell from this, uh, but it looks a lot more like the Python optional while being mm -hmm. just as as strongly typed as the other languages. So if I say if I if I need to pass an optional to a function. I can just pass the value none. I don't need to tell you, oh, this is an optional, but it's an empty optional. I can just say none, right? And I get the empty optional type, which is really cool. Um, but it, it, what an optional is, is it's a thing that might be there and it might not. And so here you can see like A is an optional int um, and it is there and B is an optional int and it's not there. Um, and you can check, uh, you can say like if a, so this is going to be true because a does have a thing in it. Um, we'll get the value out and print it. Um, and if b, well b is a is a none. It's an empty optional. Um, so this is not going to this this if is going to resolve to false. It's not going to print it. Um, and then we have a couple helper methods. Um, these are things that will also benefit a lot from references. Uh, we'll be able to add more kind of like helper methods here. Um, but you can also, uh, you know, like sort of get a thing or a default. So here, like, these are going to be uh, uh, your these are going to be ints that you get out. But like mm -hmm. the first one, you know, a exists. It's one. So or else two. Well, it's still going to be one. B doesn't exist. Or else two. So we're going to get two here. 